Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be looking at the reduction of iron 3 ion to iron 2 ion. We're going to look at examples of several reducing agents and we're going to study their chemical equations. Iron 3 ion is reduced to iron 2 ion by several reducing agents. Let's first let's look at potassium iodide as a reducing agent. So the half equation will be iodide ion is oxidized to iodine. The reducing agent of course itself is oxidized. So iodide is oxidized to iodine. So this is the basic components here. Of course it's not balanced. The charge is not balanced. So the number of atoms must be balanced first. There's two iodine. Remember halogens are diatomic molecules. So I2 and therefore there's two iodide ions involved here. The charge on the left is minus 2, the charge on the right is 0. If you want to know how to do this in detail, please look at the link at the corner of the video. So now in order to balance the charge, again we have to add electrons. That's the only thing we can do to balance the charge. We cannot remove any of the elements here and we cannot, uh, we cannot do anything to add positive charge or remove positive charge. So in order to become minus 2, we have to add 2 electrons to the right. So this is the balance equation, half equation. The number of atoms are balanced on left, the left and the right and the charge is balanced on the left and the right. Then for the reduction of ion 3 ion to ion 2 ion, Fe3 plus becomes Fe2 plus. Now the number of atoms are balanced, one ion atom and one ion atom on the left and the right. However, the charge is not balanced. The charge on the left is plus 3, the charge on the right is plus 2. In order to balance it, of course, again, we can only add electron. Electron consists of one negative charge. So we add electron to the left in order to make plus 3, plus 2. And so we have our other half equation. So we have our two half equations here. Now if they want you to write the full ionic equation, how to do that? Before we get into it, I just want to mention that whenever I say full ionic equation in this video, I'm specifically referring to the combination of the two half equations. I'm not referring to the technical full ionic equation. If you want to know about the full ionic equation, that is compared to the net ionic equation, then please click on the link above. In order to combine the two, if we write both the half equations, now, if two electrons are lost here, remember that these are happening at the same time. Half equations are two halves of the same reaction. They represent two halves of the same reaction. One oxidation and one reduction uh, process happening at the same time, happening simultaneously. It is a redox reaction. And so, if two electrons are lost here, then two e electrons also have to be gained. And so, we write two in front of electron. 2 moles of electrons and of course in order to balance the charge everything else will become 2 as well and so now that we have our number of electrons balanced for, by both half equations then we can cancel the electrons cancel the electrons and we have our full ionic equation by combining both the, both the equations both the half equations so here you have two iodide ions 2 Fe3 plus on the left and then on the right we have one iodine and then we have two moles of iron two ions. So this is how it will look like. This is the full ionic equation. When you are asked to write only the half equation, you don't have to add the two here. You don't have to balance the number of electrons. When you are asked for just the half equation, this is the full half equation. In a half equation, you must balance the number of atoms on the left and the right and the charge on the left and the right, that's all. You only balance the number of electrons between the two half reactions when you are asked to write a full ionic equation like this. Okay, so that's potassium iodide. Next, let's look at sulfur dioxide as a reducing agent. So sulfur dioxide is a re reducing agent and it is oxidized to sulfate ion. Remember, reducing agents are themselves oxidized. Oxidizing agents are themselves reduced. Reducing agents are oxidized. So here, Sulfur dioxide is oxidized. Sulfur dioxide reacts with water here to form sulfuric acid and hydrogen ion. So first we have to balance the number of atoms and then we have to balance the charge. So when we balance the number of atoms, we have two moles of water and two hydrogen ions. So the charge on the left is zero. There's no charge on the left. Therefore, we know the charge on the right must also be zero. Since we have two plus here, then we add two electrons. Now the number of atoms are balanced, the charge is balanced. And so this is our half equation. And then the half equation of iron of course is the same. 
Now, since two electrons are lost here in the half equation where sulfur dioxide is oxidized, that means two electrons also have to be gained by iron 3 ions to be reduced to iron 2 ions. Two electrons lost, two electrons gained. Then we can cancel the number of electrons and we can combine both half equations to form our full ionic equation. So we take all the reactants on the left here, sulfur dioxide and water, and all the reactions here, reactants here, two iron 3 ions. And then on the right, we have sulfuric acid and two hydrogen ions. Sulfuric acid, two hydrogen ions, and two iron 2 ions here. So this is the full ionic equation. Okay, then let's look at hydrogen sulfide as a reducing agent. Hydrogen sulfide reacts to become sulfur. It is oxidized to sulfur and there's a H plus ion here. So when we balance the number of atoms first, there's two hydrogen here. So we need to add two in front of hydrogen. So this, the number of atoms are balanced. Then we have to balance the charge. Now, once again on the left, the charge is neutral. There's no charge on the left, zero. And so on the right, currently we have two positive charge. In order to balance it, we have to add two electrons so that they will become neutral here on the right as well. So that's how we got two electrons here. Now we have a half equation here that has the number of atoms balance and the charge balance. Iron, ion's half equation doesn't change, it's the same. Same case here, we also lose two electrons. Therefore, two electrons must be gained by ion 3 ion. So there's two in front here. Same thing, in order to form the full ionic equation, we cancel out the electrons, two electrons. Then we get hydrogen sulfide here plus iron 3 ion becomes sulfur hydrogen ion and iron 2 ion here. Let's look at tin 2 chloride as a reducing agent. So tin 2 ion will be oxidized to tin 4 ion. Tin 2 ion oxidized to tin 4 ion, both in the aqueous form. This is straightforward. The number of atoms are balanced. Now the charge is not balanced. So on the left, we have positive 2. On the right here, we have positive 4. In order to become positive 2, we need 2 electron. So plus 4 will minus 2 and become plus 2 on the right, which is the same as on the left. And so now the number of atoms balance and the number of charge is balanced. So we have our half equation here for tin 2 to tin 4. And then the half equation for iron again is the same. Iron 3 reduced to iron 2. Now since two electrons are lost, two electrons have to be gained. So we add two in front and all three we have to add two. In order to uh, obtain our full ionic equation, cancel the electrons. On the left we have iron uh, tin 2 ion and iron 3 ion here. And on the right we have tin 4 ion and iron 2 ion here. So this is our full ionic equation. Sodium sulfide is also a reducing agent. Sodium sulfide is SO3. Sulfide is SO3, sulfide ion. Sulfide ion is oxidized to sulfate ion. Now this is by adding of water here. So sulfide ion plus water, we get sulfate ion plus hydrogen ion. And now we have to balance the number of atoms first. So to balance the number of uh, hydrogen, hydrogen here got two, so we have to add two in front here. So here, now we've balanced the number of atoms, that's all. So now we have to balance the charge as well. Let's look at the left. The charge on the left here is two minus. Water has no charge. So the total charge on the left is two minus. And on the right here, we have two minus here and two positive here. So these two alone will give us zero charge. In order to make it two minus to be the same as the left, we have to add two electrons. Again, we have two electrons. So this is the half equation for the oxidation of sulfide ion and this is the half equation for the reduction of iron 3 ion in order to form a full ionic equation we cancel both electrons for the both the half equations we combine them and so here we just add all the product all, all the reactants on the left side and all the products on the right side and here we have our full ionic equation we can also use metals that are more reactive than iron 3 ion as a reducing agent. Now you will learn why when we learn about reactivity series of metals. So here magnesium is more reactive than iron, so magnesium can be used. Magnesium will be oxidized to magnesium ion. So Mg becomes Mg2+. Now although the number of atoms is balanced, the charge is still not balanced. So we have 2 plus here. On the left side is neutral. 
So for 2 plus to become neutral, again, we add 2 electrons to become neutral. So 2 plus and 2 minus here will become neutral. Now the number of atoms are balanced, the charge is balanced, and so this is our half equation for the oxidation of magnesium. And then we have our half equation for the reduction of iron 3 ions. Cancel the electron once again, we get our full ionic equation here. This is the full ionic equation. So instead of magnesium, anything that is more reactive than iron can be used. We can use zinc, anything that is higher than iron in the uh, electrochemical series, the ECS. That's it for today guys. Please hit the like button if you've learned something and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.